Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, Lord, I'm excited. Um, look, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's Minister Paul in Northern California. The Sunday word. There's earthquakes uh, southwest uh, of me, northeast of me, uh, directly east of me, directly west of me. The world is shaking all around me, and I'm sitting here full of joy. I, I hope it was clear. My goodness, man, you know, all these scriptures are falling into my spirit. I, I, uh, like, like, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers is one. Another one is like, don't be, don't be ensnared or trapped into the affairs of this world. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I, you know, look, I haven't planned or anything. You know, this is how church is supposed to be. This is home church. I, did, I, I didn't read forward in advance. I'm going to go to Luke 18. But my goodness, saints, do you, do you understand? On YouTube, there's the, what you're seeing is, don't, don't be, don't be, look at my hair. Do I look like? I, I had to make myself, I want you to listen to this, please. This, do I look, I'm just excited. It's this joy. Do, do you see how I look? Do I look like my shirt's perfect or my hair's perfect? There's a message in this. You know, I could have wetted my hair down and combed it back. Here's the message. When you look in the mirror and you keep looking for that perfect person, you're never going to find it. Jesus sees you as perfect because he sees Christ in you. He sees himself in you. You, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. He don't care about your looks, fat, skinny, uh, you know, pimpled up, whatever. Look, I'm here to encourage you today. Christ loves you just how you are. And, and if, you, if you don't have Christ as your... I'm, I'm on fire for God because of obedience. If you don't have, if you don't know Jesus Christ and you just happen to randomly tune into this message on Sundays, we do this every day. Today's going to be a little different. I want to do, I want to start off this service with the altar call. If you don't know Jesus Christ and he's not Lord and Savior of your life. If you haven't had a personal encounter with him where he changed you from the inside out to where he's all you think about. Raise your hand, I'll pray for you. Send me a private message or email me at livingingracewotw at gmail.com. I want to pray for you. My dogs may bark, the phone might ring, my wife's out running to the phone's dead. <laughs> That's going to help a little bit. But uh, praise God, look, I want to pray for you. Jesus Christ uh, came to save that which is lost. Misty, you're going to have to stop. You need to go over there and lay down because we're going to have some church up in here. Get in your bed, good girl. Daddy loves you. This is the day that the Lord has made and even the, the animals need to come into obedience. Okay? You just need to chill out. Look, set all the distractions aside and um, I need to tell you, I felt really heavy hearted. I felt really heavy hearted like I wasn't good enough. And then I was reading Brother Justin's video about this confirmation of how he felt like this new evil he'd never felt before. And he was wondering if it's himself. Brother Justin, if you see this, it's not you. Uh, I'm going to comment on you after I finish this. I, uh, you know, I'm making time to do this uh, in between family and ministry and everything. Uh, but God, he's given me this peace. To It's not you. My, my, my son quit talking to me because, and there's no explanation for it. Uh, it's just like my dog over there growling. There's no explanation for that. When she does this, I think they sense earthquakes. But you know what? Though the world would cave around me, I, I built my house on the rock. And when it hits, man, it's just going to hit the impenetrable fortress of, of the, the living God and his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, but I feel evil all around me too. But I just feel like this light encompasses me, man. When you when, when you humble yourself, that 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 scripture I gave, it, what was it? Second uh, Chronicles seven. If my people who are called by my name uh, shall humble themselves and pray and then turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear for them and I will come and forgive them of their sins and heal their land. I think I just quoted it almost like exact. That's, 
Everybody say, calm down, Paul. But here's the thing. I don't want to calm down. I honestly don't want to calm down. I, I, I want to get up and, and shout a little louder and jump a little louder. Let the world be evil. The Bible, the, the word, what you're seeing is Jesus Christ's prophecy come out. And so that's what makes me excited. I want, Missy, come over here and lay down. I want people to know she's acting up. I'll put you outside. Are you in a situation where you feel like you're losing control? Take control. You know, this, uh, help me, Lord. If, if Jesus Christ isn't your personal savior, I'm going to tell you, you, if you're waiting for that perfect moment and that perfect day, it's not going to happen. I really thought I had messed up. I thought that uh, I hadn't uh, been a good enough Christian and a good enough servant. And, and, uh, and I really went to bed heavy hearted. And I, and I hope people realize on my video where a, a vision of the rapture, that wasn't a dream. I was trying to talk to my wife this morning and explain it. But since, you know, uh, she said, she said, I've already heard the story. It's not a story. And that's what I'm, I don't uh, It's not a story. It happened. And then she kind of smiled. And she's like, well, the event, <laughs> the event. I guess she didn't really know what to call it, and I don't either. So what do you call it? I was, I, was, I was sitting right here in the recliner, just like this one behind me, but it goes back. And I was listening to worship music, and I fell asleep. I was watching Brother Justin's video um, about uh, confirmation on discernment. I'm thinking of spiritual warfare. I'm like, I'm thinking... Man, I just did a thing on spiritual warfare. And that was, so his confirmation was confirmation for my confirmation. You know what I'm mean? It's just God is confirming everything so quickly within, sometimes within the same day, within the same hour. These birth pangs are ramping up closer and closer. We got to get some word in, <laughs> you know? So you don't just hear me talking, but I, I just want to reach one person and say, look, you don't have to be perfect. So I fell asleep feeling unworthy literally feeling unworthy and and as a sinner but i was listening to worship music and, and I, I was listening to a song called broken i'm going to put a link to the song broken maybe who knows if i will remember that i'll try and as i as i fell asleep uh now i'm asleep i want you to know when you're awake you know if you're awake if you don't know if it was a vision or a dream it was a dream because if you're awake, you know you're awake. That's the difference. I felt like this elevator just took up and I shot up. And I realized I'm awake and I'm looking, I'm thinking no more tomorrow. I made it. This is the truth. You know, the Bible says that we could speak in unknown tongues. You, do you know when I do that, some people be like, where's the interpretation? There is no interpretation. I just spoke to God in a, in a language he gave me. First Corinthians 12. It's a gift and you can have it too. It, do you know what's beautiful about what I just said? It says that if you don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit will make intercession for you. Satan can't understand what was just said. He can hear me speaking right now and try to bring distraction and divisions and have the phone ring or whatever. But when I just speak in that language God gave me, he can't understand that and you need to know that. It's a direct line. It's like a hotline to God on the red phone that's untraceable or trackable or unmonitorable. Hallelujah. So anyway, I looked at my phone and I went just like this and it was a 3-7. Just like that's a 3-7. Seven and then two, one, three. It, it, it's just a, a recurring thing. Does everybody see that? Go backwards. Five, two is seven and two, one is three. It was just like that. It was a three, seven. It was 1252. I can still see it in my head. And it was three, seven. But here, so I know I'm awake because I just keep this by, I'm just used to having this by my bedside because of the business I own. This was like a 24 hour number. And I looked at it. And I saw the 3-7 and, and, and I heard her singing about the rapture. Now, here's the odd thing. The song doesn't mention the rapture. 
but but yet I heard the rapture and I experienced what I believe the rapture will feel like. We're instantly transformed and caught up into uh, a place where there is no concern for tomorrow. Hallelujah! Man, so, but here's the thing. I heard this music and so I just started listening to the thong, song and thanking Jesus because my spirits had been lifted. I went to bed heavy hearted and they'd been lifted, but the three seven kind of got weird. It's been happening so much that like you just saw it happened right now. I have to be honest with you, it kind of got weird. And so I said it, exactly this. I'm awake. I'm hearing the song in my headphones. Here's my headphones. Look, Minister Paul, dude, God said, show them, Paul. I will look. I was like this. These are my new headphones. My wife bought them for me. And man, they sound good. And I sleep so peaceful. And I was listening to worship music. And she was saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it's 3 7. But I, I heard the rapture. I've played the song back. There's no mention of the rapture in the song, but I'm rapturing. I'm awake. You know how I'm awake? Because I'm looking at my phone and I'm hearing the song. And so I asked God, I said, what is this that I'm seeing? Because I'm like above my house. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? What doesn't? Everything in the Bible sounds crazy that I could get out of the boat and go walk on water. That I could lay hands on somebody and sense an evil presence and command it to leave and it has to go. That you could come to me and say, look, I have incurable cancer and I have no hope and I heard you have the gift of healing. Well, don't worry. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed through the stripes that he shed on the cross of Calvary. You're healed. Boom. And then go to the doctor and tell him you don't have cancer no more. And that woman by faith marches into the doctor and said, you know what? Check me again. It's gone. And then they check you and say, we can't explain it. But we can't find no more signs of cancer. That sounds crazy too, doesn't it? And yet it happens every day. So for me to tell you that I literally had a vision of being caught up, just like John the Revelator, that's what he did. He said he was caught up. Harpozo. I'm trying to pour out to you anything that God gives me. What I'm, what I'm trying to share with you and experience an encounter with the living God and his son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. And God, and this is when I said, God, what is this? I mean, three, I've been seeing it since July. And it's just getting kind of weird. And you know what he said? I am coming. And it wasn't a scared, I'm coming to get you. You know, it was, I'm coming for you. The one who died for me and he goes to prepare a mansion for me. I have a mansion up there. He says, I'm coming, man. You know what that means? Eternal life in paradise, walking along the stream with my mother and brother again and seeing all of you guys together as a family forever with no worry about the light bill or the electric bill or the smud bill, the power bill, the car payment. We don't even need cars. We just fly around. He said, I'm coming to give you all that and more, more than your mind can even imagine. You think floating above your house is something? Wait till I show you what I have up there. My goodness. So I got up and went to the restroom and came back and put back on the headphones. It's a 12 minute song and listened to the rest of it. I was awake. That's not a dream. Let's do a quick word. I honestly need to spend some time with my wife today. Everybody look, don't neglect your family. Uh, your spouses, but always put God first. Like to this morning when I woke up, I, I, I put, put God even in front of her. And some people be like, oh, you mean? No, it's biblical. And then, and then we talked, but first God. And, and uh, that's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And people are thinking you're preaching anti-family. No, I'm not. Jesus Christ, he said, let's go. And they're like, well, what about your mom and this and that? Who's my mother and who's my brother? Come on now. So that's why you got to be careful on YouTube. And let me, I don't like to do this. I really don't. But I feel it's important today. On 127, 2013, it's very important. There's, there's at least three or four channels that just read out of the book of Enoch and that's it. That's not biblical. So that, that's not biblical. And you'll notice they're starting to get weird. Test the spirits. There's, there's, 
at least three channels that I know of. That, that, like I said, big channels that I know of who get 75 thumbs up likes and zero thumbs down that are preaching not to read this anymore. That this is dead. That if you're reading this, you don't have a true relationship with Jesus Christ. Is that right? Then why did he visit me in my sleep last night? And you know what he put confirmed? This. How can he confirm his word if you don't even know his word? And then so then they begin to have you question your relationship with Christ. That's, that's not Christ. That's Antichrist. Anything that comes in and questions your relationship with Christ and judges you as Antichrist. So I simply typed onto his channel because I thought it was a good video. And I, I've heard the channel, you know, but I avoid some of these major channels. And uh, I hope that I never have 10,000 people who start uh, following me just because they think that I know everything. I don't know everything. I get on here, I'll tell you, I don't know everything, man. I got to read this. I got to read this to learn, just like you. I'm just a man just like you. I'm just sharing experiences that I have with God. And uh, what I, I'll never do is lie to you. You know, if you have a question, I can answer it through this. But, um, but anybody telling you... Uh, Amen. Anybody telling you, like, don't read this anymore? Didn't Jesus Christ, you know, when he came and got uh, attacked by Satan, he quoted this. Matter of fact, the, the, the apostle Paul, he encountered Christ on the road to Damascus as Saul and was transformed into Paul and uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote almost three quarters of this entire New Testament. And you know what he said? If anybody, anyone, any any bean. I wish I knew where that scripture was. I'd go find. I think it says even any angel, any if anything, gives to you a other gospel, other than this gospel I've preached. Let him be a curse. And then he said, and I say to you again. He says it twice. I want to make sure that you understand. If anyone, if he was here right here, he would just show up on YouTube. But he'd say, if anybody on YouTube preaches you another gospel other than this, then let him be accursed. You got to be very careful. How does that, a person saying this is full of dead people, get 75 likes and no questions. I asked a question, are you referring to the Bible? Because it said it's just full of dead people and dead stories. No, it's not. Elijah was in here. Let me just show you how you can just call out lies. Elijah was in here and Enoch was in here and they were translated never died. So they're not dead people. When Jesus went up into the Mount of Transfiguration, he's not dead. You saying Jesus is dead in here? He's in here? Is he a dead people? Oh yeah, I'm getting close to home now because I'm going to come at you with the truth. When, 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 uh, when, when Jesus went up onto the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses showed up, which represented the law, and Elijah, which rep, uh, showed up, uh, which represented the prophets, the law and the prophets, Jesus right in the middle, fulfilling all of it, and then they began transformed and shined. Are they dead people? Show me in the Bible where Elijah died. Otherwise, you just lied. So I, but he doesn't say the Bible, he says the book, but then he talks about Obama laying his hand on the Bible. He keeps calling it the book, the book, the book. And so I asked a simple question. I was going to stay on his channel and listen to some of his videos. And uh, I asked, are you referring to the Bible? Are you saying don't read the Bible? It was an honest question right before I went to sleep. I watched a bunch of videos. I was trying to get caught up, leaving people nice comments and stuff. Um, just doing the work of an evangelist. The Bible said we all should do the work of the evangelist. Well, this morning I woke up and the first thing I was interested in was his reply. Was he talking about the Bible? And he, and he told me, he said, don't get full of pride, my friend. God bless you. They always end in God bless you. And I'm not calling this man out. It was an evil spirit that detected the anointing. Whether you want to believe this or not is irrelevant to me at this point in my life. I'm going to be 49 in March. It's irrelevant. What you think I may be feeling or not, I know what I'm feeling. And it's Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So... A spirit detected the anointing. You mean we're not allowed to ask a question or else we're full of pride? When the Bible says we're to test all things? I was simply testing if he was saying that all these people are dead, including Jesus. It's a book of dead people. I'm quoting the man. 
And I'm not calling him out. I'm calling out the spirit and praying for his deliverance from that spirit. Anybody that gets on here and tells you don't read this, run from them as fast as you can. If, I, if that's all I say and the phone rings and I have to go, remember that. If anybody gets on here and tells you to anything other than what's written in here, run from them. Or if they come and question your relationship with Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Ask yourself that. Do I know Jesus? Yeah, I do. I can't see him, but I know him. I met him. How do I know? Go back to the, they're questioning your salvation. Do you understand that? Don't let them. And, and if you question them, they say you're full of pride. It's pride to ask a question. So I immediately hit unsub and I said, you know, I wasn't anger or offense or anything. I said, sorry to interrupt. Have a great day, peace. And I'm out. Depart from them. Because I'm not hanging with somebody that's telling you not to read this. I mean, this is where if God, it says God will always confirm his word with miracle signs and wonders, how it can confirm the word if you don't even read the word. I get my biggest revelations in here. And in here it says, study to show thyself approved. It says, I word have I hidden my heart that I might not uh, sin against thee. It goes on and on about, it says, be in season. This it says the Bible is, uh, what's that one scripture it's about? It, it's good for correction and reproof and edification and exhortation. This word is infallible. It's forever. Jesus Christ, if he wrote it, I'm going to read it. He's not dead and this word ain't dead. This word's alive. I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and to not bring you harm. Psalms 91, it's a prayer of protection. We're not to read that. There's another guy on here, big guy. He, 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 he's into that too. He said he had a vision. He went to hell and he woke up and people were being fed the word. And the word was, was this, the, the Bible. And it was poison that was killing him. Be careful on YouTube. Even everything I'm saying right now, ask yourself, did Paul really have a vision of the rapture last night? Go to Christ and ask Christ, is Paul telling the truth or not? Christ could put a metal detector on, uh, what, not a metal detector, maybe I'm about ready to find gold. A lie detector? Yeah, there's gold in my backyard, but you know what, I don't need it. That's how, that's how soon the rapture is. Uh, if, if Christ is, the, is, is giving me a lie detector, I pass. And so you can have these experiences too. That I wouldn't sit here. I'm, you know what I'm doing? Let me help you a little bit. You might be thinking, why does Minister Paul have all these dreams and visions and stuff? Because I'm obedient to God. I'm sitting here taking time out of my day to give a what's called the Sunday word, and I, and, and I did, I, I, I want to do this Wednesday, to be honest with you, I didn't want to do it, but I did it anyway, because God said obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, where do you learn that? In here. So let's go. I've said enough. I just wanted to get out, out of the way that when, when, when you see all the earthquakes everywhere, and I know a big one's coming, a big one really is coming. Matter of fact, I better just look and make sure that the world's still here. <laughs> Iran. That one looks like a California. There is a, a one did just hit California. Hold on. It did. King City, California. I used to live in King City. Californians get hitting with 3.4s and 3.5s and 4.0s. That's nothing. Let them hit. Let them hit. A bigger one's coming. And you know what? I have no fear. I'm looking at a red dot right near where I live right now. There's no fear. And, and you know why? Because Christ in me is my hope. And and I want to give him everything I do today, let, let him give glory, get, get all the glory. I'm going to go and just read some word in Matthew uh, or Luke 18. And I, I want to show you what the Lord sh uh, showed to me. Okay. And he spake, a, this is Jesus Christ speaking the red letters. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. And, and, and look what he says. That's why you need to read this. I don't care what anybody says. You need to read this. Matter of fact, when Jesus went on into all the synagogues, what did he do? Didn't he like open up the word and say, today this has been fulfilled in you? Anytime he spoke, wasn't he quoting the word? It is written. It says, 
And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and do not faint. Uh, let me just put that in the translated thing here. It says, lose heart, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. If the phone rings, we'll just call it a day. You know, this is not a traditional church where it's two, two, two songs, 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.17. You can tell I didn't prepare for this. I'm, my wife's going to be home about half hour. And what am I doing in between time? Am I having a party? Am I calling friends? Nope. I'm getting on here to put out God's word to his people because he, because of obedience. I don't have time to do these cross-references. I apologize. I'll give you the cross-references and you look them up. The cross-references, it says, Jesus is telling people that that all of us, men and women and children and, and adults, uh, they should always pray and not to lose heart. So have I lost heart today? On January 26th of the year 2013, isn't that crazy how fast it went? No, I haven't. Well, you know why? Because I'm praying, always. Went to bed praying, woke up praying. The cross-reference for that is 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And then he's saying, uh, verse 2, he's going to give this parable, watch. There was in a city a judge. Now, what, he, he didn't fear God, and he had no regard or respect. Remember, here's a judge in a city. Jesus is giving you a parable that means something here. Whenever Jesus gave a parable, it had deep meaning through, through the end of time, through the end of this age of this world. It's, it, it holds the same meaning. Some people say, well, are you sure? Yeah, because God said, I'm the Lord and I change not. In other words, I don't change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not going to change. So what he wrote here, he still means today. I don't care what you've been told or what you heard. God doesn't change. So he's, he's telling about this judge. Now, this judge has no fear of God. Sound familiar in today in California or wherever you may be? Because I'm telling you, Cal, the whole state of California and the government and all the judges, they don't have no fear of God. They're making rules that go against God. So that tells me they don't fear the God or the, they're making rules against. You with me? And, it, and, and not only that, he doesn't have any respect for people. So right now I'm just getting a revelation. We don't even need to go any farther. How can you fairly, how can you fairly judge people? If you don't fear God and don't respect people, sounds like a corrupt judge to me, doesn't it? And there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversaries. Or in other words, what she's saying is, can you vindicate me? I've been wronged and can you vindicate me? Now, what does the Bible preach about the widows? To honor them and help them. I have a widow next door. I pull in her bins. I'm not going to get into the whole thing and try to, because... I'm not taking away any glory from God, but she lost on Father's Day of 2011. She lost her her husband. Of, he was only like 40. He worked at Beale. Great guy. Helped me a lot with some stuff here. And when, and when I had my business, he was like special forces out there in Beale. Carried a gun with a gun band because we would both leave with gun bands. And he helped me with put some sights on my gun. I'll tell you the story. I went over there with the, I couldn't get these sights on the gun. It takes special equipment. He was a tool guy, and I'm not a real big tool guy. And he put and he just put it on in like five minutes, like it was nothing. Had like the vice grip and everything. And uh, and he 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 went for a canoeing trip on Father's Day of '11. It's in the paper. I could put a link. And he, and his son fell out. Her, her her son too and he dove in to save his son and they both perished on Father's Day now I walk by both of her cars have his name and her name and she was an emotional wreck that very that very uh, next day I went over there and I witnessed to her of, of, of the love of Jesus Christ and it was just you got to understand it was military there was probably like 20 military people in there in camos and some in, in brass you know officers and family and friends and I walked right up to her and I'm like I'm your neighbors and anything I can do I'm a minister and I want to help you and ever since then I've been, just been dropping these seeds of hope and seeds of hope and seeds of hope Bible wants you to help the widows and the orphans I don't care what anybody says I honestly have I do not it does not concern me 
what you say if it goes against what's in here. I've just lost all concern for that. I'm sticking to this because it's working. So here's this widow. She's coming to a corrupt judge. She's been wronged and she needs some, some justice. I'm just reading this parable with you in real time. And he would not for a while. He's, You know why he wouldn't? Because he didn't care about her or God. So we got to find out what is God, Jesus trying to teach us in this parable. But afterward, he said within himself. So now here he, he didn't help her at all. So he's already wronged. He's already in the wrong. He's already committed the wrong act. But now he's saying to himself, because it says after a while in verse four. He's, he's thinking to himself, though, though I don't fear God and I, I have no re respect for any people. Yet, he says, because this widow's troubling me, it, it's on her. He's, he's troubled, like, and plus she's continuing to ask, look, I need justice, I need justice, I need justice. She's continually coming back. I can just see her right now in the spirit. The next day, the next day, look, man, you're the judge and I need some justice. You're the judge and I need the justice. She had a text, she'd have been blowing up his cell phone. You know, this, th this hasn't changed, but we've changed. We have ways to communicate like this YouTube. Look, man, are you going to help me or not? You're the judge and I've been wrong. It's your job to help me. And so this is troubling him, it says. And uh, it says, uh, I, I will vindicate her or she'll just keep coming back and wearying me. I'm going to vindicate her or else... She's just going to keep blowing up my phone and she's going to, there she is knocking on the door again. What does she want? What does she want? You know what? I, I don't like her. I don't respect her. I have no fear of God. It's all about me is what he's saying. Look, uh, you know, I just want to get some peace in my life. So I'm going to help her just so she'll go away. I'm just reading it as, as I feel in my spirit. And the Lord said, now look, look what the Lord said. This is Jesus talking. Hear what the unjust judge said. How many people know our God? Some people confuse this parable. Our God has never been unjust and never will be unjust. He's a holy, sovereign God with no sin. In verse 7, it says, And shall not God vindicate his own elect, his own people, which cry out day and night unto him, Though he bear along with them. Let me just rapture uh, rapture seven. <laughs> Verse seven is a rapture scripture. Jesus saying, look, you ought always to pray and not fear not. Just like that woman that kept going and going and going and going. Because our God is a just God. And he wants you to pray to him. And you continue, continue to press in and press in like the woman with the issue of blood. No, but I've spent everything. I've lost all hope. I got to get... To, to, to Jesus, and if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Who touched me? What do you mean, who touched you? There's people pressed in all around you. No, I want to know who touched me. Who touched me? Because I, had, I felt the healing power of God go out of me. Get your minds off the world. I, you're, just stop looking at Minister Paul. And yes, I'm a little overweight. And yes, the lighting ain't back. And, and get your minds on Jesus Christ who can vindicate you. If you go back to him and pray and pray and pray until he answers your prayer, don't stop praying. Men aren't always to pray and don't lose heart in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. And if you don't pray, I'm going to pray for you. What do you need? What do you want? He's my provider. He has everything you need. I'm telling you, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's anointed me to preach this word to tell you he's waiting for you to come back and pray one more time because he's about ready to burst through that sky and when he bursts through that sky all hell is going to break loose on earth and you don't want to be here for that stop this you got to be the second uh the martyred people and no you're going to escape all that the, the god is going to count you worthy to escape the wrath that's coming upon this world and i rebuke every single person that's preaching a false doctrine other than what jesus christ said that we have not been appointed to wrath it is not our job to be deceived to go into the tribulation to go witness to the souls it's our job to pray that we can escape that and go to jesus christ and i rebuke every single person on youtube in the name of jesus christ of nazareth who died so that i could escape that and if you don't have enough faith i'm going to stand in the gap for you who are you raise your hand you lack of faith god said i'm looking for a man that'll stand in the gap to make up the hedge 
There was a hole in the hedge where the door was coming in. I'm going to make up that hedge and stand in there and pray with you and for you. PM me. Are you like, pray one more time. God, what, what do you need today? Keep praying and don't lose heart. Because your prayers are going to be filled up in the prayer bowls. Remember, but Jesus Christ is coming to receive you unto his own. That where he is, there you may be also. His word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against him. And you know what he told me to don't keep praying and keep praying. It may not feel right. It may not seem right. It may not seem like there's any justice in the world. But there's coming a day, saints, where God just says, okay, it's time. Woo! Go, son, go get your bride. Sorry for shouting, Lord. I feel like I feel like there's evil all around me, and there's thunder in there, and the earth is shaking, and the the weather's weird, and I just gotta pierce through this darkness with the two-edged sword of the Word of God to get through somebody's thick skull that don't believe a lie. The great when God allows the strong delusion, you think you're just gonna be able to know where who the Antichrist is and all that. It ain't gonna be like that. In other words, it wouldn't be deception. Let me wrap this up. We need to pray. And shall not God avenge his own elect? In other words, look, he called you. And whom he called, he also equipped. And whom, uh, Romans 8. Uh, yes, I got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also sanctified. Romans I don't even know if I'll get through this parable. I gotta go to Romans. Have to. Acts Romans. God, what God, what Jesus is saying here is God is the one that called you. And shall not God, then there's only one living God. Not vindicate his own electorate, who, which cry day and night upon them, and though they bear along with him, I tell you that he will avenge them quickly. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find any faith in the earth? Hebrews 10, what? 3, 7. This is amazing. We're gonna, this is going to be a short Sunday word. We're going to spend some time with your family today. I feel like today I need to win a soul. Today, I have to, the Bible says, he who wins a soul is wise. I, I got to lead somebody to the Lord today. Somehow, some way, let it happen, Lord. Where does it talk about? Right to it. That's God. It's 2-9, which is an 11. Romans 8, 2-9, which is 11. Go to it. This, uh, this is not a cross reference. Check your Bibles. This is something the Holy Spirit put in my heart. So why would the Holy Spirit tell me to read this and man tell you not to? Ask yourself that. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among brethren. God already knew you before you were even born. He knew how many, he knows how many hairs are on your head right now. And some people don't have any, amen. But we love you anyway. You know what? I'm with you. I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, if you just tuned in, this is where we're having some fun. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah, let the earthquake, man. I'm going to sit here and laugh at it because God chose me. Pulled me out of the fiery pit of darkness and, and gave me eternal life in heaven. How can I not sing of his praises forever? <laughs> More... <laughs> Man, if you're bald, I love you, man. I'll kiss your forehead. I don't, I don't have a problem. I'm going to be bald one day too. But you know, here's the thing. I'm going to take that statement back. Christ will come before I lose this. He's that, he's that close. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he also called. Say, I've been called. Just confess it. I've been called. I know I'm called. Devil, stop lying. You know I'm called, devil. And so he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. So what should we say to all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He didn't even spare his own son. Let's go. And so I want, it starts with saying in Romans 18 that you should always pray and don't lose heart. Because uh, God hears every prayer that you say. And one day he's going to justify you. 
and vindicate you from all the injustice you, that, that you've incurred in your entire life. There's coming a day where he's just going to say enough is enough. They, 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 uh, go get him, son. I saw it. I didn't dream it. I was going to, don't, don't say I dreamed it. I saw it in a vision. I, I have dreamed it. It's not just me. It's all over. It just depends on looking in the right places. So And so we're going to end with uh, 8. It says, so it's talking about Jesus Christ returning here. Because he, when he's saying this, he's already there. Did you catch that part? When he's saying this, he's already there. So when he's saying when he comes, so it would be like, look, uh, hey, you guys, when, when, I, when I come here to you, when I'm already right in front of you. No, he's saying when he comes again. Uh, what, when he's saying, you know what he's going to, he's saying, will I find any faith in the earth? He shouldn't even have to ask that. But he's telling you to how to have faith by praying. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what you're hearing is the word of God that others are telling you not to hear or read. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. The, the same word that those big channels with, with that nobody's question is telling you not to hear. Minister Paul is saying, yes, you need to hear it. It'll increase your faith. Where do you read about faith? Read Hebrews 11. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 37. Because it ends in, he's looking for faith when he comes back. Which is soon. Let's go to Hebrews 10, 37. It's just flowing with it. We're going to have a short Sunday. Who knows, it may have already been an hour. Time, I've just, time just seems to have really become irrelevant to me. It, right now, it wouldn't matter to me after what that what I encountered last night in that vision of the rapture. I've had a dream. Now, look, in, in just the last seven months, I want to say, I've had a dream of the rapture and a vision of the rapture. It, it, right now, it could be 11, it could be 12, it could be 1, it could be 2. It doesn't matter to me. Because when, when I got caught up in my vision last night, Time didn't matter. There was no, we got to be here. We got to be there. I, I, I was, I'm concerned about this. I hope I wake up without a stomachache. I hope my headache goes away. Cancel. Every day was this moment in time. You didn't have to worry about getting old because you were an eternal being that lived forever. So what difference does it make if it was today or next week? Because you're, you're infinitely immortal. My goodness. <sighs> Hebrews 10.37. I know today's a little different. And I might be rushing. It's just because I'm so excited. And I'm so full of the fire of God. That I can't turn it off. And my goodness. Why would I want to? After I'm done here. I'm going to go reach somebody else. There's, there, there's a white star right there, which means unfulfilled prophecy on Hebrews 10, 3, 7. Maybe that 3, 7 was just for this moment right here for you. And then we just all go, what if? For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry or will not delay. Now look, it says, and the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. That's referencing, and he won't delay any longer. There's, let's go back to Luke 18, 8. He that is coming shall come and won't delay any longer. In the meantime, Jesus is telling you, you should always pray and don't lose heart because I'm coming. And then when he returns, will he find any faith in the earth? He's saying, and then he's cross-referencing, he that shall come will come. And they're telling you, don't read this. I'm, I, I'm praying that. Yeah. Just read some of Luke. Read Luke 19. Just all red letters. You know, my mom, when I, I didn't know where to start in the Bible and I got my first Bible, everybody's thank God for praying mothers. 
My mother went home to be with the Lord. It, it, time has went by so quick since then. I knew that when she went home to be the Lord, she lived to be like 73. 73. She lived to be 73. Um, I knew that time was short for me. I just had this, this, this revelation. I don't know what else to call it. That time was short. I, I, I mean, not immediately, but I know soon. It's October of this year will be six years, and it seems like yesterday. Six years. It's been five years right now. October 18th, she went home to be with the Lord with me standing there holding her hand. And uh, I had asked her to give me a sign. We had made a deal, you know. Whoever goes first, look at it's It's 11, a one, three, one, one, one. Thank you, Jesus. It is. It's one, one, one. It's a sign. One, one, one. You can take that as a recurring sign, or you can say World War III is about ready to start. Either way, man, we're going home. I said, Mom, you got to give me a sign. And I, was, so I stayed with her. The, I put my whole business on hold in 2007. I filled all the positions without me and just d d didn't care about money. I, I did that a lot in my business. Um, I, I said, don't call me. I made somebody else a sergeant. I said, don't call me. I'm with my mother. I brought my laptop. I brought a cooler full of drinks and, and waters and moved into her room at the hospice. Just moved in, said, everybody leave me. This is my mom, ain't nobody taking me out of here. And I stayed with her the last three days. She was in a coma. And um, and I would just play music like I believe. And some of the, the have you ever heard that song? I believe, I believe, I believe. It's by Brooks and Dunn. Look it up. It's called Brooks and Dunn, I believe. And I can only imagine when that day comes. He says, Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in awe of you stand still? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I would play these songs over and over and over and they would walk by in the hallway and they'd see me leaning over her crying and, and I knew she was going home. And so I just closed the door. <laughs> closed the door. Look, this is me and my mom. This is my last moments with her. And uh, when they came in, they were going to roll her because you have to roll her every half hour. And I knew. I went outside and called a friend. I said, let's pray my mom home. She's in pain. It's time for her to go. So we prayed, Lord, your perfect will for my mother to be out of pain. It's not her will to be in pain. It's not your will for us to be in pain. I called my friend Johnny in San Jose, a minister of the gospel, and we came into agreement that my mother would not be in pain. We didn't say whether she was going to live or die. If she came out of that coma, she wasn't going to be in pain. If she went home to be with the Lord, she wasn't going to be in pain. His will, Lord, we pray your perfect will. We came into agreement where we were always in praying. Our men are always to pray about everything, even things like that. I went back into the room, and they're going to, I said, don't, don't roll her. I have power of attorney. I'm her son. Do not roll her anymore. And I went over by her bedside and my wife, you always hear her in the background sometimes, and my sister and my brother had came down from Washington. We're, we're all in this same room and we went over by her side and she squeezed my hand and tears fell out of her eyes and, and uh, I just closed the Bible. I just feel like sharing this story. And I said, I feel Jesus in the room. And, I, and she squeezed my hand. And I believe those tears that were falling first from her eyes is that she'd entered into the presence of the Lord. Remember I told her, give me, mom, you gotta give me a sign, I gotta know. See, because her and I, we always hurt and languished and travailed about my brother Terry, US Marine Corps. Uh, we, we were wondering, did he make it, man? Did he make it into heaven? That's why I'm so hungry to win souls. Did, did my brother make it? You know, is he going to be up there when I get there? Did he make it? You got to get that hunger and thirst for righteousness in me that doesn't just be about you, about others. Did he make it? That's why I told mom, you got to give me a sign you made it.
And she did. She squeezed my hand and tears came out of her eyes. And I'll never forget that moment ever. And I'm going to be with her again because of Jesus Christ. And I love him so much. And I love you saints. So later I found an email my brother had sent me from uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, he had gotten injured and stuff in, in the military is what had happened and been in the hospital. And this email, it was like, it was like, because he drank and smoked a lot. He was what's called like the black sheep of the family. You thought I was a black sheep back then, man, my brother. He ran the town. He ran the town. My older brother. Older than me and yet went before me. Isn't that amazing? There's a time for everybody. Um, so it's what we do with the time we have left. What are you going to do? I'm going to win a soul to the kingdom of God. Because it says every heaven, every angel in heaven rejoices. So I found this email. And it was telling me how much he changed and how he loved the Lord and he accepted Jesus Christ as his personal savior. It was AOL back then. I think it was 2004 when he went home or something like that. We were going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on these emails. And we were talking about Jesus and he told me he gave his soul to the Lord. And I had mentioned something about an old song because we used to listen to, you know, uh, old Tupac and we, we'd get in my mom's infinity with these big six by nines in the back and just roll around just acting crazy in the town and stuff. And he said, no, I don't listen to that kind of music anymore. He'd been born again. <laughs> He'd been born again. And I knew I made it and I printed it out and I highlighted it and I took it to my mom. I said, mom, don't you ever worry or concern in your heart again about whether Terry's in heaven or not. Read this. He made it. He been he made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of his life, and I showed her the thing. I still have it. The email from my brother, you know why? Because I was witnessing to him and witnessing to him and witnessing to him. Terry, it works, it works, it works, it works, it works. And that's what you, and, and so my mother went home in peace. And the, the last thing she left me with was, you got to get to your sister Cher. You know, when I met my wife, she wasn't saved. Now her entire family is. And thank goodness, because her brother went home to be with the Lord too. But he'd, he'd went to church with me enough times to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of his life. Matter of fact, when he had about two months to live in 09, he went home too. Everybody's going home. You know why? Because we're going home. It's a rap saints. He sat here on this couch and uh, I, I cared for him for three weeks straight. And all I did was witnessing to him. You know what my biggest witness wasn't preaching or yelling or screaming or holding up all these Bibles and this and that and doing all this and that. You know, hey, 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 beat you over the head with this. No, just letting him see how much peace and love and joy I had. And he was wondering. And uh, I said, you know, God changed me. And he said, I could tell. And then that one, people will open a door just by something simple like that. Say, so, you know, I used to have a, I used to be a miserable, unhappy person, man. I'm just happy as can be these days. And they'll, and they'll be like, what's your secret? And I say, I, I met Jesus. And if they respond at all, like, well, tell me about it. That's your ticket in to begin to witness to them. But if, it, it, but it, they're just watching you. I'm a soul winner, saints. I'm down here to win souls and win souls only. I got my wife. I got my brother. I got my wife's brother. His two sons. They're all saved and born again and out of trouble. And, God. and so what do we do? We pray. Like I got a nephew in Hawaii and a nephew, he's went on a vacation into Nevada right now. We pray for them. Men are always to pray. And when it says men, it's talking about men and women. Brothers and sisters in Christ. We should always pray and don't lose heart. What are we praying for ourselves? If you're constantly spending time praying for yourself, where's your faith? Because didn't we end with, when I return, will I found faith in the earth? My faith is enough. His grace is sufficient for me to be able to give all my prayers to you. 
and to Jordan, my nephew in Hawaii, who's, you know, running from the hurt of losing his dad, but he's saved and Christ is with him. He's still dealing with that, you know, three years later. And uh, I'm comforted in the fact that I took him to church like he came down here and lived for a while. And I, Wednesday and Sunday, we're going to church. People shouldn't say, oh, you can't go to church. You know, YouTube's lost its mind. It's crazy. I like going to church. How could it be possibly wrong to go in and listen to some worship, hear some word? Just, just you know, church cannot become your life. Your life is a relationship, not a religion. Does that make sense? The church is us. So if there's a room full of people praising God, what's wrong with going there and going with them and praising God? Don't get so legalistic in some of these things. You can't read the Bible. You can't go to church. You can't give a offering. You, you know, man, you do what God tells you to do. That's how I'm going to close in prayer is let's, let's close in prayer. Thank you, Father, for this time you've brought us together with no interruptions and no distractions. You're a good God. Jesus Christ, I know you're coming again. I want to reach just one soul. If anybody out there needs prayer, I want them to feel this prayer, that the peace and the love and the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ is now resting upon you. I call down the favor of God from the throne room of heaven upon that one person that's just looking at this, feeling that tugging on their heart to fall upon them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, as you called me and equipped me and justified me and sanctified me and glorified me to win the souls, and you said, he who wins a soul is wise, I speak to that one lost soul right now, and I say, come into the kingdom right now in Jesus' name. And for those who are losing heart, when it says not to lose heart, I stand in the gap for them. I said, Lord, fill them up with grace. Drop favor, unmerited favor on their life right now in the name of Jesus. That one person. I see a, I see a man right now with short hair. I see a woman with middle length hair like this. I, I say that the favor of God is upon you. Amen. I see an African-American man right now. And he's wondering what this is all about. I'm here to tell you, you've been called into the ministry, son. You've been called into the ministry. Stop running from it, says the Spirit of the Lord. Turn and walk into it instead of running from it. Don't worry about how you're going to do it because I will equip you, says the Spirit of the Lord. Woman with that infirmity, thou art loosed today by your faith. That one final prayer you did has landed on the mercy seat. You are healed, says the Spirit of the Lord. To that woman with addiction that keeps puffing cigarettes and can't quit and puff, I see her just doing this. Every time she raises it to her mouth, she knows it's wrong and wants to quit, but she can't find the inner strength to do it. The Lord God said that by his stripes that he took on his back, that one right there, on his back right there, had your name on it. You are now delivered. You don't need electronic cigarettes or patches or pills or a doctor whom the son has set free is free indeed. I speak to that addiction and I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be free. Now walk in your freedom. Don't touch him ever again. This is a temple. Be ye holy like I am holy, says the Lord. I will empower you. I will equip you. I will justify you. Look unto me, the author and the finisher who knows the end from the beginning, says the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for using me as a humble, willing vessel to put out this award. Anoint it and send it out. One soul, Lord God, could I have one soul for you? Not for a crown, not for a jewel. Just because in my heart, my heart longs, my heart, my heart's desire, its beating desire is to know that I've lived a life pleasing to you and your body, your word. It says, Lord, that he who wins a soul is wise. Let us all increase in wisdom right now, God. Let our wisdom and knowledge increase in our understanding of you to bring the lost souls, the sheep into so Jesus Christ can return for that unified one accord church. Let us all have this same hunger and thirst 
to go out in this final end time harvest before the return of Yeshua. Oh man, and I love you, God. And I love you guys. I, I, I hope I said something good. I, 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 I just, I'm, I'm speechless. It's rare, rare that I'm speechless. I've been, something's happening, saints. If that was one of you, continue to pray. I got to hit stop. Now it's between you and God. He's dealing with your heart right now. Don't look to me. Look unto him. Where your help comes from. You need help. It's coming.